Hi, I'm Sandy McDaniel, and this video clip is designed for teenagers, but might be viewed by adults as well. Having a hard day today? Every day is a hard day. We are living in such demanding times, and we've been raised to think that we are responsible for everybody else's stuff and their happiness. It gets to be really heavy sometimes. What other people think of you is none of your business. My mom used to get really mad at my uh, son and his friends because they would put their bathing suits on the rail of the upstairs railing of the house to let the let them dry in the sun and she go well but the neighbors think well the neighbors would think the boys were drying out their suits but she was worried about what the neighbors think i did a video on facebook and it was less than perfect and um i had a hard time with that i wanted to take it off and i wanted to bury it but I used it as a teaching tool and put another video up talking about it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes. Oh, oh, we are so not raised that way. We try so hard not to make a mistake, not only with our parents, but with our friends. Because it's such a difficult time, the teen years. The hormones are running in all directions in every body. And therefore, it's kind of like walking through a landmine field. It's, you never know when someone is going to go off or someone is going to be kind to you or ignore you or be mean to you. It's a treacherous zone. And it's so easy to take it personally. I always recommend that you find one friend, at least one friend, an ally, somebody who thinks you're great and you think they're great and you can go through the minefield together. I remember my daughter Kathleen came home from fourth grade and she slammed the front door and so I went down into the bedroom and I said, do you want to talk about it? And she said, well, guess what? And I said, what? And she said, I've worked for a whole entire year trying to be into the popular group. And guess what? I said, what? I made it. Wow, that's really great, Kathleen. No, I don't have one thing in common with them. Guess what? Guess what? I don't have one thing in common. Have you ever said to yourself as you're walking around, well, I wonder what planet I was supposed to go on? I felt that much of my life, trying to fit in, trying to figure out how to be somebody who fits in, which I will tell you at my age doesn't work. You need to be you. You need to be your version of you. And other people who love that version of you will find you and you will find your place in the world. But it's taken me a lot of time and a lot of heartache to figure that out. Join groups with common interests and goals. I, at my age, do Tai Chi, yoga, and I go to water aerobics. All of the people in all of those groups have become friends of mine over the years because we have like interests. We like the same things, at least in the water part of it. I remember when Kathleen, my daughter, was, um, I think it was in high school, she started a game night. So she organized a thing where kids would come and they would, they would uh, play board games. They walk in the door and they get a number and they had several tables out and on the, each table was a number and then you had a letter on the table and you could go to the board game and that was your position and that was your board game. I think it started off with, you know, like three tables. And next thing I knew, we had a lot of kids, teenagers playing board games, which was fine with me 
because I knew where they were. And I was also the one that was providing the popcorn and the water. I think I said uh, to my kids, I'm not buying, <laughs> I'm not buying drinks for all these kids, meaning pop. So I think we had water and popcorn. Nevertheless, she invented a way of having people that she liked to doing something fun she liked to do, which were board games. And it became a huge activity. Keep active. Exercise is more than good for your body. It is also good for your emotions. Running is the best way to diffuse anger, diffuse frustration, to work off negative feelings. I have been known to drive my car down the street with all the windows up, of course, and scream bloody murder Aha! when I'm mad at something because I'm at least diffusing some of the anger. The ego loves to make a drama out of anything negative. It builds it in your mind and it builds it and builds it. A little really it doesn't matter thing turns into a huge black cloud that engulfs your life. Remember that all the teens in your life are going through hormonal changes, which makes them wacko. Your best friend can certain, suddenly turn on you and say something hurtful. What you need to think if that happens is, oh, she's having a bad hormonal day, and let it go. Don't take everything so personally. You are not alone. Sometimes it feels like you're alone. Sometimes you just need to breathe and keep going. Love yourself no matter how miserable you are or how miserable you think you are. Love everyone, even those who are difficult to love. In my book, Believe You Are Beautiful, looks like there's a glare on that. Believe You Are Beautiful is my book. The punchline in it is, is that, that um, Owl says, see, you were, all, you were always beautiful on the inside, and it's the inside that counts. But the punchline is, beauty is on the inside. Therefore, no exceptions. You are are beautiful. When you compare, you don't think you're beautiful, so don't compare. You have been given a gift. You are an original, the only you there will ever be. And there is a place for you on this planet. There is a place for you in your life. There is a place for you among the kids your own age. Part of finding it is to just relax and be you. And don't count the votes of people you don't want to be in their lives anyway. I had a boy, I was at dinner with him one night and, and he was all hurt because a group of boys don't want him in his group. And I said, so what are these boys like? Well, they're, they're mean. They make fun of me all the time because they don't like my hat and they put me down all the time. And I said, okay. So I took a knife and I said, this is a magic wand. And if I, when I wave it, you can be in the group. They're going to welcome you in tomorrow. And I said, but there's one catch. You have to be like them. You have to be unkind and you have to pick on other people and hurt other people's feelings and hurt their lives to be in that group. Well, I don't want to do that, he said. I said, then why are you hurt? They don't want you in their group. Choose your friends wisely. One friend, one person can be your ally in such a way you can't imagine it. You will find your way. And here are three ways 
to ground yourself. and help you when you're stressed out. Way number one. You feel that combustible place where you're about to explode and just I did this with my grandson. I showed him a picture of a dragon. I said, who does this re remind you of? Because he had combustible uh, anger. I said, who does this remind you of? He laughed and he said, me. I said, okay, so when that builds up, I want you to go somewhere safe, in your room, wherever, and I want you to be a fire-breathing dragon. I want you to do that eight or ten times. And then I want you to turn it into a little dragon. And do that six or eight times. What I knew was the best thing for my grandson to do was to take deep breaths to calm down, but he wasn't going to do those. And he would become a fire breathing dragon, which is just a fun way of taking deep breaths to calm down. A second way is to dust. This is just something you do in your imagination, but if you think of it, you're an energy field and your energy field is collecting other people's energy all day long. So you can get all bogged down in all the energy. So when my two children, Scott and Kathleen, came home from school, I had a feather duster for each of them on the floor. And they would just dust all around each other. You can do it in your mind. You start at your head and go down the front of you and up the back, and down the side of you and around and up the back. Using your mind as, a, as your imagination. Dust yourself off and then take a breath. The third way is some way, a way that I taught my granddaughter. She would get really nervous. She competes in Taekwondo tournaments and she'd get really, really super nervous. So I said, I want you to be a redwood tree. The thing that's fantastic about redwood tree is how big they are. So they have these immense roots that go in the ground. So if you, well, let's do it. Close your eyes, take a breath. Now imagine that you are a enormous redwood tree and feel your roots going sinking into the ground oh, all the way, 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 way into the ground. And you're big, but you can bend enough to bend with the winds of life. But you're a spiral and up, up, up goes the top of your tree and it's gathering in all of God's light and love that now shines through all your branches and through all of your trunk and all of your being. And now your job is to shine that love on everything and everyone, everywhere you go. Take a deep breath. And let it out. Your job is to shine. You'll find your way. What I want you to know and to believe is that I care about you. I want you to succeed. I want you to be happy. Inch by inch, it's a cinch. Yard by yard, it's awfully hard. Tomorrow's a new day. Tomorrow is a clean slate upon which you can write whatever kind of day you believe you can have. Choose a loving day. Choose a happy day. Choose a successful day. I'm Sandy McDaniel and I care about you.